you. Yes, you, the viewer. I want you to close your eyes and imagine a whale. Think about it for a few seconds. What do you see? Now open your eyes again. What did you see? If it's something similar to this whale, then you're not alone. When most people imagine a whale, what comes to their minds is a large baleen whale such as a humpback whale. Now, a couple of y'all are probably special and imagined a predatory whale such as an orca or a sperm whale, but I can guarantee none of y'all imagined a beaked whale. currently 24-ish species of beaked whales known to science, with the vast majority of them being understudied because of their lives in the deep ocean. These animals are frankly fascinating, with there being so much we still need to learn about these beautiful creatures. These whales are named after the beak they have, which is similar to the mouse many dolphins have, and they spend the vast majority of their time in the deep sea, with that being the main reason on why we know so little about them, and that's in spite of their global distribution. There are so many different types of beaked whales, with them being the second most diverse group of cetaceans after dolphins, and many of these beaked whales deserve their own videos. But today, I'd like to talk about one of the most obscure members in an already extremely obscure group, the bottlenose whale. The bottlenose whale, or specifically members of the genus Hyperodon, are some of the least understood whales on the planet, with us having very little information about their lifestyle and behavior. Many of y'all have probably noticed that this whale looks an awful lot like a dolphin, and that's a reasonable conclusion, as both of these cetaceans have a similar bill and body plan. But these similarities are due to convergent evolution, which is a phenomenon where two organisms evolve similar traits independent of each other, with the prime example being the body plan of sharks, dolphins, and ichthyosaurs. The melon on bottlenose whales is much more pronounced than on dolphins, and in addition to that, there is an immense size difference, with the largest of bottlenose whales being more than twice the length and five times heavier than the average dolphin. And with their massive size, their range is understandably huge, but I should probably mention mentioned that there are two species in the genus Hyperodon, with the more well-known species being the North Atlantic bottlenose whale, or Hyperodon ampulatus, which can reach up to sizes of 32 feet long and weigh up to 8 tons. Shockingly, the North Atlantic bottlenose whale lives in the North Atlantic, and they can be found from the Arctic to the north to the Canary Islands to the south. The second species is the lesser known of the two, with the southern bottlenose whale, formerly known as Hyperodon planfornis, getting up to 25 feet in length and weighing up to 6 tons. Their range stretches across the southern hemisphere, with there being sightings from Antarctica to Australia to Argentina and South Africa. The main difference besides size for these two whales is that the North Atlantic bottlenose whale has a much smaller melon compared to their southern counterparts, which has a much more pronounced melon. And for the people on the back who don't know, melons are used to make their echolocation more efficient, which is extremely important for the bottlenose whale as they live in the deep sea. Both of these whales forage for food in the deep sea for around 45 minutes at a time, looking for prey such as squid and other soft-bodied animals. But occasionally, some North Atlantic bottlenose whales have been recorded eating organisms such as the spiny dogfish. Both species of the bottlenose whale dive to these depths in groups, with the southern variety diving with two to five individuals, while the North Atlantic bottlenose whale dives in much larger groups, with feeding expeditions going anywhere from 40 to 20 individuals, and they are still sociable creatures when they return from the ocean depths. Both species live with a similarly sized pod, with the North Atlantic bottlenose whale living in much larger groups. Both species don't live in super tight-knit communities though, with different individuals coming and going from the pod when necessary, with their pods being for convenience unlike other animals such as the sperm whale, who form close bonds with each other that can last a lifetime. Like most animals, both species of bottlenose whales are threatened by humans in some capacity, but thankfully, both species of the bottlenose whale are labeled as least concerned by the ICUN. But there is still pressure applied by humans, with whaling being a historic issue, with the North Atlantic bottlenose whale having a history of being whaled because of their curiosity towards boats. But thankfully, whaling has been restricted not too long ago, and I honestly might make a video on the history of whale conservation, so if you want to see that, please consider liking and subscribing. While the southern bottlenose whale is put in less danger by human activity, both species are still threatened by people with bycatch and military equipment being especially dangerous, with technology such as submarines being threatening because of their sonar which can mess with the whale's echolocation. 
The general public knows almost nothing about these amazing whales, with one of the few times that the eyes of the masses was brought onto the bottlenose whale was on January 20th, 2006, where a juvenile bottlenose whale found itself in the River Thames and was affectionately named Willie by Londoners. But she didn't survive, with the cause of her unfortunate demise being kidney failure, muscle damage, and dehydration. Her body was donated to the London Natural History Museum, where it was on display till 2018. Never again would these these amazing creatures catch the eye of the general public. And that's honestly sad. They might not be as charismatic as something like dolphins with their hyperintelligence or humpback whales with their songs, but there is something so unique about these amazing animals that are unknown to the public as a whole. So a quick recap. Bottlenose whales are deep diving beaked whales, with there being two species, the southern bottlenose whale and the north Atlantic bottlenose whale. Both species hunt soft-bodied prey such as squid in the deep ocean and live in small groups that aren't very tight-knit. So you, the viewer, I have one thing to ask of you. Talk about the bottlenose whale if you're ever having a conversation about whales. Try to rope it in and help more people learn about these amazing animals. And hopefully I helped teach you about the whale you didn't know. Thank you all so very much for watching this video. It is definitely different from what I usually make, but I definitely enjoyed making this video and I hope y'all enjoyed it too. If you liked this video and want to see more content like this, like and subscribe to show me y'all want more content like this. I also have a channel membership and the support I've gotten from members has been immensely helpful. And this video was available for members first. And if you want to become a member, it costs $4.99. And speaking of channel members, thank you to Nort Manon, Hatsune Mike 31, Tristan YouTube Arts, Fat Agro, Tarchi Gamer, Power Chicken 2K, and Banana Persor. I'd also like to show off some amazing artwork, which was made by the lovely members of Hadrosaur Haven, which is my Discord server, and I'd love to see y'all join using the link in the pinned comments or description, but I don't have much else to say. Thank you so very much for watching this video, and I hope y'all have an excellent day. Bye bye